Well, hey guys, what's up? Um, I just made myself a little antioxidant punch. I've been drinking this. Um, you guys know I love my Pure Rose Nectar. And this is, I call this my pre-workout. It's just ice water and like a few teaspoons of the Pure Rose Nectar. No, this has no, this has no caffeine or any kind of stimulant in it. It has no sugar, it has no calories. It is just Pure Rose essential oil, which is packed with antioxidants. So I love having this. When I come home, it helps undo all the damage from the pollution and the infrared radiation from all those computer screens and monitors and tablets and whatnot that I'm exposed to all day. Aging and raging, as well as <laughs> sunshine, which, uh, you know, it activates matrix metalloproteinases that age the skin, contribute to skin cancer, generate free radicals. So really loving this. I call it my pre-workout. Um, speaking of antioxidants, uh, you guys have been asking me, you know, I consume diet, a diet rich in plants. And I drink a lot of antioxidant containing beverages, teas, pure rose nectar. So you guys have been asking me for a video on why I consume an antioxidant rich diet, what it does for me, if it's good for skin, anti-aging, longevity. So that's what I'm gonna cover in today's video. Pure Rose is sponsoring today's video. Uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Pure Rose Nectar. I drink it every day. So whenever I have a sponsor, that means there's a discount code below. So now is the time to take advantage of it. Open the description box and you will find it there if you click on the, click on the link. So save yourself quite a bit of cash. But I'm a huge fan and I drink it daily in both hot and cold beverages as well as incorporating it into fun foods. Um, check out my last uh, video where I showed you guys my my little uh, coconut rose pistachio dessert. Still really loving that. But why are antioxidants important in aging and slowing down age-related changes? Um, what do they do for us? Well, in order to understand that, you need to understand a little bit about aging. Aging in the human body is a combination of two things. Intrinsic aging, which is just the natural processes of cell biology and of life, the inevitable. Um, everyone has undergoes intrinsic aging, just with time, changes in metabolic processes, cumulative damage of just existing, builds up over time, regardless of who you are. Yes, it is influenced by your genetics, which no, you cannot change, but that is that is what contributes to eventual age-related decline in total body health, tissue function, organ function, and the appearance of aged skin. Like Axel Rose said, <laughs> no pun intended with the pure rose here, nothing lasts forever, so intrinsic aging is unavoidable. But the other component of aging is extrinsic aging. That, that is, those are all of the factors that are in our environment, lifestyle things that we choose to engage in that influence the rate of intrinsic aging. These include pollution, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, particularly the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation directly on the skin. You know, one of the reasons why I focus a lot of my content on sun protection is that it is, I mean, if you're not protecting your skin from ultraviolet radiation, all the other anti-aging pursuits, the cosmeceuticals, they're just futile. They're just futile. You've got to protect your skin against the number one source of skin aging, and that is ultraviolet radiation. And to that tune, you know, I always get many questions. Don't we need some sun exposure for vitamin D synthesis? And here's the thing, it is both not only myself, but the consensus opinion of dermatologists worldwide, as well as many other healthcare providers, family physicians, internists, that sun exposure, seeking sun is not a safe means to acquire vitamin D. And in terms of free radicals, what you guys have to understand is that while certain wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation from the sun do activate vitamin D synthesis in the skin, you also get a mega dose of ultraviolet radiation of all the other wavelengths that generates damaging free radicals in the skin that not only ages the skin, activates matrix metalloproteinases that degrade the supportive framework of the skin, but, spoiler alert, 
all of those other damaging rays of ultraviolet radiation, they also degrade that vitamin D that is synthesized in your skin and render it useless. So seeking sun, sun exposure as a means to acquire vitamin D is neither safe nor pragmatic. Uh, the ultraviolet radiation the dosage that you're getting and the amounts of other wavelengths that you're getting is far, far too damaging for that to be efficient or logical. So not a recommendation. Ultraviolet radiation is, is an extrinsic ager of the skin for sure. It contributes to skin cancer. Um, but also environmental things that contribute not only to skin aging, but total body aging um, are things like uh, a diet rich in, a diet that has a lot of smoked meats has been shown to be accelerate aging, but also uh, tobacco smoke. If you are a smoker, um, smoking is probably the thing that ages the entire body so much, you know, nothing ages the body like smoking. My content focuses on avoiding sun exposure, avoiding unnecessary exposure to UV as a means to protect your skin and keep your skin healthy. And I, you know, I wish I did a better job on here of emphasizing to you guys the importance of not smoking. Uh, you know, if you are smoking, I have to really, really encourage you to stop. It is probably the number one thing that you could do to accelerate aging and disease onset in your body not just from the skin, not just in terms of your skin and skin health, but every organ system is severely affected by tobacco smoke. So that is, that is, an, intrins that is an extrinsic factor in aging, for sure. And all of these extrinsic factors that I mentioned are so damaging to your body and contribute to aging by the generation of something called free radicals. Free radical theory of aging is widely accepted and was first proposed by a guy named uh, Denham Harmon from the University of Nebraska. He's a physician in the 50s. So shout out to those of you in Nebraska. Uh, Denham Harmon is responsible for our understanding of how, how oxidant, how uh, free radicals age or contribute to aging and disease onset. Uh, free radicals are uh, kind of probably a very confusing topic. It's a word that we throw around a lot and, you know, May, may not be something that you understand. So free radicals are essentially this. Atoms in the body um, have out, circulating outside of them something called electrons, which are just little negative charges. And they, they circulate around the, the atom in a pair. And that keeps the atom happy. It balances out all of the charges. The atom is happy. But when an atom loses one of those electrons from its outside shell, the, ch the charge is unbalanced and it becomes very unhappy and very unstable. And it desperately seeks to acquire an electron to fill that, to fill that pair, to fill that void. So it steals electrons from other things, whether it be uh, proteins or lipids or other atoms in the body and the, ce the cells of your, your tissues and organs. So it creates this vicious cascade of a free radical trying to fix itself by generating another free radical by stealing from, from a, a partner. And this affects the integrity of your DNA, of proteins in the body, lipids, as well as the cell membranes of, of our cells, of all the tissues in our body. And when the cell membranes become damaged from oxidation, their integrity is compromised. They can no longer efficiently or appropriately transport or regulate the transportation of key nutrients, micronutrients, as well as fluids and water. So tissue hydration and nutrients, nutrient flux becomes severely compromised as a result of, of oxidants, of, of this pro-oxidant outcome. And our body has its own system in place for coping with this, but it is limited. So consuming a diet rich in oxidant, rich in anti antioxidant foods, mostly plants, fruits, vegetables, as well as plant beverages like green tea and ro pure rose oil, these are all robust dietary sources of antioxidants that can help come in and supplement your body's own antioxidant system and can lessen the damaging effects of these extrinsic aging factors 
and help you to recover from that. That's why I'm drinking pure rose oil now um, as a way to do that. So I, you guys know I love my veggies. You see my grocery hauls, you see me drinking teas, you see me drinking pure rose. So you know this is part of my daily, daily routine. In other words, the best way to get antioxidants is through your diet, not through a pill, not through some sort of supplement. And uh, we know that because we actually have some studies looking at people taking antioxidant supplements by mouth don't seem to be helpful and if anything seem to be harmful. By and large, the overwhelming majority of data shows that in order to get benefits from antioxidants, they need to come from your diet, not from a supplement. So that is why I like to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and I like to consume uh, antioxidants in drinks and beverages, and that is why I'm such a fan of pure rose oil. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, and you guys saw, I love adding it to water. If you are someone who does not like drinking water and you struggle to drink water, um, try this out because it is much better than adding an artificial sweetener or um, this, you know, flavor drops. Uh, it doesn't have any, any additives, it's just the rose, and it gives such a nice flavor. Just a few teaspoons is all you need into um, 16 ounces of ice water, and it makes it taste so much, so much better and so much more decadent. What is the difference between pure rose nectar and rose water that you might see in the store? Pure rose nectar is pure rose essential oil, whereas rose waters that you might see like uh, culinary rose water or you know just in the store those are pure, uh, rose essential oil that has been substantially diluted with water and other additives and adulterants and sometimes other compounds that to your tongue taste like rose but are not rose so um, geranium extract for example so they are not they are not the pure rose oil it is a pure rose oil that is a rich source of a variety of antioxidant compounds as well as vitamins and minerals. And so it differs from those rose waters in that manner. Pure rose nectar comes from Bulgaria. Bulgaria is one of the world's leading producers of rose damascena oil. They have the ideal climate and environment and uh, atmospheric conditions. A study performed in 2010 looked at the um, antioxidant profile of a variety of, of plants to see which ones offered the most robust uh, amount of, of antioxidants and rose damascena as well as, as, as green tea were topping the charts. So rose essential oil is a phenomenal dietary source of antioxidants as well as vitamins and minerals. So I strongly recommend it. I love the way it tastes and I know you guys are too. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I love just adding a few teaspoons to my water in the morning, um, you know, here and there in the evening. In the morning, I love to have actually matcha green tea with rose. The combination of green tea and the rose are really, it's really nice. Uh, and I also love to make an herbal tea with, um, I just brew up in my um, tea, teapot some strawberry tea and I let it come to room temperature and then I chill it overnight and in the morning I add a few teaspoons of the pure rose the pure rose nectar and I just have a phenomenal strawberry rose tea that tastes delicious and I take it with me in the car on, on the way out and I drink it that way. I like uh, pure rose nectar recommends uh, one to two tablespoons a day as a serving but I personally like to break it up throughout the day and have a few teaspoons in a variety of beverages rather than all at once. But you know, you can do it either way. However, I just find that, you know, it's more logical to kind of split up the, the antioxidants into a continuous, make sure you're getting it kind of on a continuous basis versus bolusing it all at one time into yourself. Um, so that's how I do it and it tastes fantastic. It just has a nice, light, floral, fruity taste to it. It does not taste like perfume. It is not bitter. It is not tart. Um, it is not a foul whatsoever. I, I don't, I, you know, I was apprehensive because I find that some rose flavored foods are a little off putting and this was very, this is very subtle, um, but sweet, it has a subtle sweetness to it without having any sugar or added sweeteners or anything. Zero calories, zero carbohydrate. Um, it is, you know, just, just the rose essential oil, zero grams of fat, no, no calories. 
Um, and so I, I love the way it tastes. Fantastic. You can put it in hot beverages, you can put it in cold beverages, and I store it in the refrigerator. That maximizes its shelf life. Um, and so it lasts a very long time. And like I said, check the description box below for that coupon code if you're at all interested. But now that I have recuperated from my day and hydrated, I'm gonna head to the gym. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful to you in terms of talking about why a diet rich in antioxidants is important and something that you should make a daily habit for not only your skin health and looking good, but feeling good and staying healthy and uh, warding off chronic diseases and illness. So I hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.